Mood swings. Mood swings are a part of everyone's life. There are days when each of us feels ups and days when we'll feel down. However, when one's mood is significantly down for several days or more, depression may be diagnosed. Although clinical depression is a common human experience and the cause of the depressed mood, that, um, the inevitable human experience of loss will also have a potent effect on mood. It is not something that you can just snap out of. It can be caused by an imbalance of brain chemicals, along with other factors. Like any serious medical condition, depression needs to be treated. Two therapies from nursing intervention classification state that they are used with every interaction with patients, and that would be active listening and presence. Major depressive disorder. This is commonly referred to as depression and can severely disrupt your life, affecting your appetite, sleep, work, and relationships. Diagnosis requires. It requires at least five or more additional symptoms, including loss of interest in previously enjoyable activities, changes in weight um, or appetite, sleep disturbance, fatigue. Now, psychotherapy is found to be consistently beneficial. The depressed individual may exhibit all of these symptoms, the sadness, hopelessness, feeling empty, aches and pains, fatigue and weakness. Depressed elderly women are higher risk for fatigue and weakness, and people who experience major depression feel persistently sad. They don't take pleasure in things that they once enjoyed. The depressed individual may also exhibit irritability, social withdrawal, neglect of previously enjoyed activities, and again, feeling worthless and hopeless. People who suffer from this condition when they feel this way, they will welcome sleep and experience their waking life as a living nightmare. No matter how hard they try to snap out of it, they feel as though they're falling into a pit with nothing to hold on to. Minor depressive disorder. It might be brief. It involves fewer symptoms than the five symptoms required to be a major depressive disorder, but it does not feel minor to the patient. Dysmic disorder. This is a form of a mood disorder of depression characterized by a lack of enjoyment and pleasure in life that continues for at least two years. It differs from major depression in that the dysmic disorder is longer lasting, but it is less disabling. Dysmia can prevent a person from functioning or affect sleep pattern and daily activities. Now, these folks suffer fairly mild symptoms on a day-to-day -day basis. However, over a lifetime, it could be have severe effects, like high rates of suicide, work impairment, and social isolation. The symptoms of patients with dysmic disorder are not as severe as those associated with major depression, but the duration is, again, much longer. When major depressive episode occurs on top of a dyspnea, clinicians may refer to this as double depression postpartum depression. In this society, we are taught that becoming a mother is the most glorious thing you could ever do, the most natural thing, and we are taught that the moment you have a baby, your life becomes focused. You gaze down at your child and all is right in the world. For others, this is a biological shift in a woman's body and are mentally devastating. There are so many different things that happen and so many changes, and we are taught that if you don't do this beautifully, then you're wrong. You're bad. You're not a good mother. You're not a good woman. And our culture in our society does not support defective mothering. And Brooke Shield had become an advocate to reveal the very real feelings of postpartum depression. Grief and bereavement. Now, grief from the death of a loved one is an emotionally intense and deeply personal experience. While each of us reacts to grief uniquely, there are many common threads that weave through the experience of grief. These common emotions can be intense and they can be disturbing, but they are natural responses to loss and feelings of sorrow, fear, anxiety, Anger and confusion are among the emotions that you may experience. Stages of grief and bereavement. Stage 1. The period of shock. The first reactions to loss can, is shock and can last minutes or for days. They may feel numb or be in disbelief and unable to make simple decisions or attend to daily routine. Stages of grief and bereavement. Stage 2. The reality stage. When the shock wears off, the pain begins and can last for weeks or months or intermittently for years. If they're suffering from a loss, they will again typically experience waves of emotions that can involve sadness and anger. The pain is a palpable physical experience as it is emotional. They might also experience physical symptoms such as loss of appetite, sleeplessness, chest pain, or behavioral symptoms like withdrawal from society, mood swings, or inability to concentrate.
Stages of Grief and Bereavement Stage 3, The Recovery Stage Recovery represents not the end of pain over a loss, but the ability to reconnect to an interesting and joyful part of life. And this is what I call a new normal path. You refocus your attention from your pain of loss to one of living with meaning and purpose. Abnormal Grieving Normal grief reactions can appear exaggerated to those who have never experienced a bereavement. And obviously there are tears and shock and can last for months and even years. They're frustrated at professionals who could not save their loved one. They're angry with the loved one for leaving and helpless that they could not stop the process. They're relieved that the suffering is over, but they're guilty for feeling relieved. They're beginning to find a way to say goodbye and accept the loss. It is hard to realize that your hopes and dreams for the future will not come to pass, except the fact that things might have been left unsaid or undone. This does not mean that the loved one is forgotten. They still have a place here in your heart, rather than in this place with us. And then finally, acceptance of the death. Psychotherapy. Studies of psychotherapy have shown to be beneficial, consistent benefit for depression. It is long-term and requires much motivation on the part of the patient to invest considerable time, effort, and money. Marital therapy would be one that helps build stronger marital bonds to help ward off future depressive episodes. Cognitive therapy focuses on changing negative thoughts and behaviors into alternatives that do not sustain depression. Transcranial magnetic stimulation is a non-invasive method to excite neurons in the brain. The excitation is caused by weak electric currents placed in the tissue by rapidly changing magnetic fields, electromagnetic induction. The brain activity can be triggered without the need for surgery or external electrodes. Repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation is a powerful tool in research and diagnosis for mapping out how the brain functions. It has also shown promise for non-invasive treatment for other disorders like depression and auditory hallucinations. Electroconvulsive therapy. This is predominantly used as a treatment for depression. It is generally reserved for those as a second-line treatment for patients who have not responded to drugs, although there are rare situations in which it was a first-line treatment. About 70% of electroconvulsive therapy patients are women. Light therapy. Seasonal mood variations are believed to be related to the light because of the effectiveness of bright light therapy. Light therapy is definitely used to treat seasonal affective disorder, and most times a response should occur within two weeks. Medications. Drugs are chosen based on patient characteristics, prior responses to medications, family history of response to medication, concurrent illnesses, medications, and the provider's preferences. Tricyclic and related antidepressants. Tricyclic antidepressants were the first antidepressants proven effective in the management of depression and are given to persons with depression. They take a month or more to become effective. It definitely has an anticholinergic effect, which is a dry mouth, constipation. Inability to pass urine are often side effects that patients will find unacceptable. A dry vaginal wall is also a side effect. Orthostatic hypotension. Now, these medications are dangerous and overdose, and patients must be monitored for suicidal ideation. Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, SSRIs. There has been an increase in SSRIs versus tricyclic antidepressants because SSRIs have less side effects, not necessarily that they work better. The SSRIs, like the anticholinergic and orthostatic side effects of tricyclic antidepressants. Monoamine Oxidase Inhibitors. The monoamine oxidase inhibitors are not used frequently because it requires the patient to use great care in choosing foods and over-the-counter medications. Foods containing tyramine are to be avoided. Foods, uh, things with tyramine would include like fish, chocolate, alcoholic beverages, fermented foods like cheese, soy sauce, soybean, um, sauerkraut, processed meat, red wine. Any one of these also could cause a rise in blood pressure resulting in stroke or cardiovascular crisis. Nursing theories. Nursing theories assist nurses in planning care for a patient who is depressed, but the particular theory a nurse selects will depend on some factors. Despite the strong therapeutic potential of nursing interventions based on caring, some depressed individuals may respond slowly or not at all. After assess assessment, after assessing the patient with depression, the symptoms that the patient identifies is the most urgent need to address. After talking for a few minutes to a depressed client, many sensitive people might find themselves fatigued and a little depressed themselves. 
nurse a diagnosis. By listening and hearing the experience of a depressed person, the nurse will be able to assess that individual's response to the emotion. Some will feel lonely and others guilty. Some will, will describe not having feelings and others will lose all connection to others and to a meaning and purpose in their lives. Depression increases the risk for an MI. Negative thinking plays a role in lowered self-esteem. And the most common self-rating scales for depression are Beck and Zoom. Outcome Identification Expected outcomes of nursing care will be as varied as individual patients and the circumstances surrounding their needs for care. Most will show improvements with interventions like aerobic exercise training, and this has been shown to reduce depressive symptoms. Planning and Interventions the nurse identifies the priority diagnosis for each patient and establishes a plan of care directed toward the circumstances that contributed to the condition. Nursing interventions include establishing a one-on-one -on -one relationship to provide human contact and relief from loneliness. Evaluation Depressed individuals may experience progress in some areas. For like an example, they might return to normal weight, but in others, they might can still continue a lack of ability to concentrate. It is also important to remember that depression resulting from a significant loss, such as a loss of a loved one, may take weeks or months to overcome, and that the patient will need sensitive nursing care to adapt to the new situations and roles that accompany a loss.